Hi, I'm Mike Miller. I'm Public Works Director for the City of Florence. And today we're at our water treatment plant. Um, and we'll have, uh, we'll, have, we'll have our superintendent talk about processes and, and a little bit of how the water makes it from our wells to your tap in the home. Hello there, welcome. My name is August Murphy. I'm the water treatment plant superintendent. Here at the water treatment facility, we operate 24 hours, seven days a week to produce water that is safe to drink. So the production of your drinking water comes from two major components at this facility. The well field consists of 13 groundwater wells located to our north. That water is pumped out of the ground and then sent directly to the water treatment plant where we provide treatment to the water and make it safe to drink. Look at that, and here we are in the well field. The well field is 80 acres, and it has 13 groundwater wells in it. Right here is an example of one of our wells. This is well four. Below our feet is the city's source water. There's an aquifer below our feet, and these wells are drilled over 100 feet down, deep into the aquifer, and there's high-powered pumps at the bottom that push the water up and out to the water treatment plant. This wellhead consists of various valves, flow meters, control equipment, all in an effort to optimize the production of water from underneath our feet in the aquifer. So um, what's the difference between this type of well and the well that a person has on their own property that they have to maintain themselves? Basically, that would be the size. The pumps and the motors are much larger. The pipe sizing is much larger. The power required is much larger. And the city, through your utility bill, takes care of it all. Which is fabulous. You're, you're taking care of all the, the water needs so that our citizens do not even have to think about it. That's amazing. So here we are again in the well field. This is the 80 acre field that the operators maintain. One of our most important responsibilities is maintaining the uh, pristine nature of our well field. We take it very seriously to make sure that no wastes or contaminations can be introduced into our drinking water. So operators spend large amounts of time uh, picking up any debris left by humans, kind of controlling what kind of wastes can be deposited and constantly monitoring for invasive species and any other types of uh, unwanted introduction. So again, we're here at the, at the well field for the city of Florence, 80 acres, but more importantly, where our water comes from and how it, and the nature of which it's supplied. So the city of Florence is, this well field is part of the North Florence Dunal Aquifer. It's a sole source aquifer, which means that it's designated by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as a sole source for the community. And what does that mean? Well, that means that all the water that's supplying the, the residents and the community at large is interconnected. So the aquifer here in the well field is actually hydro hydraulically or hydrologically connected to Munsell Creek, to Munsell Lake, Ackerley Lake, Clear Lake, Clear Lake is the source of water for the Cedar Water People's Utility District. And then, and then Collard Lake above that. So all the lakes are interconnected. They all take rainwater, it infiltrates into the soil, and is in, and then connected to the aquifer underneath. So if something was to happen, basically anywhere in the aquifer, it could have consequences to this well field or to, for example, 
the drinking water in Clear Lake for Pasita Water um, People's Utility District. So we all manage the resource holistically. So, so we come to, you know, what we use here in Florence, we're very aware of the impacts upstream and then downstream because what we withdraw from the aquifer here actually has an impact to Munsell Creek, which is a tributary to the Sayuse Law River. Um, and as we know, Sayuse Law River and Munsell Creek have threatened and endangered species of fish, namely coho salmon and, and steelhead. Okay, here we are. One of the process of one of the processes of treating water is cleaning the filters. Over time, the filters clog up with dissolved iron that is accumulated from inside the aquifer, and we backwash the filters. That water that's backwashed is sent to our lagoons. This is out here in the water treatment plant well field, and what it does is it pumps the water out here so the dissolved iron can be settled out and sediment on the bottom so that only the clean water is filtered back into the aquifer. And as you can see here, the water is quite discolored. That is the iron separating inside the backwash water and it uh, will slowly filter down but never comes clear. Okay. This is a very, very good habitat for frogs. There are quite a few in here at the same time. So we're cleaning water for the city of Florence and also providing a habitat for the wildlife. Very much. Here we are back at the water plant. So out in the well field where all the water is pumped out of the ground, it is delivered directly to the water treatment plant. And this plant is unique in the fact that it uses two processes. Right behind me is three filters. They're biological filters. They use naturally occurring iron bacteria that live in the, that live in the water and by the introduction of air, we aerate the water and the iron-eating bacteria remove the vast majority of the iron that is in the water to begin with. They, they, they reduce the iron in the water by about 90%. Okay, so after the biological process, we move around to the other side of the plant where there is conventional treatment. What happens here is chemicals introduced such as sodium hypochlorite or bleach like substance and it is introduced into the water stream and given time through the contact chamber to interact and provide enough time to fully treat the water. There's uh, small amount of other chemicals introduced and then they're sent into the green sand filtration. This is the final process before the water is sent to the public. Inside there the tanks have special components that are designed to react with some of the chemicals to provide oxidation and further treat the water all the way to the end point where it's ready to drink. So here we are inside the water treatment plant. This room consists of the motor control center and the pipe gallery. The motor control center controls a vast amount of automated valves and other uh, processes that allow us to control the plant in its optimum. So welcome to the water plant lab. This is where the operators every day, multiple times a day, control and monitor the process. What we do here is we bench test to double check our machines to make sure that the levels of chemicals stay within parameter. And we constantly monitor the quality of the water, whether it be clarity, taste, odor, or any other unhealthy possibilities. Well, August gave you a great tour of not only the well field, but the operations of the water treatment plant. Right here, this is the discharge line from all the processes. Water comes through this pipe and then out into the distribution system. Basically, it goes um, to your home or it goes up into one of our storage reservoirs. And we have three of them in our system. 
we're able to hold uh, four and a half million gallons of storage of water. We typically use in the winter time, less than a million. And during the summer, we peak at about two to 2.3 million gallons a day. The other thing that I want to point out is we heavily rely upon electricity. So all of our pumps, which are the wells in the well field, require electricity in order to operate. So what happens when a power outage happens? Well, we have enough storage to get by during that event, but we also have a very large emergency power generator, 250 kW, so 250 thousand kilowatts of power that's produced to operate the well field. So it's a key component to keep our, our plant in operation during those winter storms for extended outages. So one of the questions that everybody asks is, how do I get involved or how do, what learning, what kind of educational track do I need in order to get into whether it's public works, water treatment, water distribution. And really it's, it's having background in math and science and then going into um, community college is a great way and there's two, actually there's three in Oregon, Clackamas Community College, Lynn Benton Community College, and I believe um, down south in Southern Oregon um, Community College there also offers a water and wastewater um, track to learn the science, learn the information, and by the time you graduate from that program, you're able to take the exams and become a certified operator. But there's nothing better than having hands-on experience, but it prepares you for that. So, so that's if you know the word to people in high school or in junior high that are looking for a career path. This is a very very honorable career path, something that our operators take great pride in because it's, it's providing clean water to the community. And what better way to do that and show um, giving back to the community than to work for a water, you know, city water system, uh, a municipal um, special district, and provide that back to the community. Thank you, City of Florence Public Works Dream Team. Thanks for coming.